Hello my sweet friends, welcome back. Today I have a reading vlog for you guys, and not only is it a reading vlog, but we are specifically reading books that I have been avoiding. I think I've done this video twice before, I'll leave the other ones linked down in the description if you want to see those. Usually for these videos I try and read books that I've been avoiding because maybe they have intimidated me, maybe they're really long books, or maybe the genre is out of my comfort zone, but today I'm coming at it from a little bit of a different perspective, and I've decided that I'm only going to be reading books that have been on my physical TV since last year so I guess over 10 months at this point. I personally love to keep track of a lot of book related statistics and so I keep track of when I buy certain books or when I add certain books to my physical TBR and so I went through my TBR cart and pulled out all of the books that have been sitting on my TBR since last year and unfortunately there's quite a few so these are the books that I'm going to be choosing from in today's video. We have quite a range of books on here we have some romance we have some fantasy we have some historical fiction, some general fiction. We also have some authors that I've read from before, as well as some authors that I've never tried before. So let's pick our first read, shall we? For some reason, when I was looking through that list, one of the books that stood out to me is this one here, which is called Songs in Ursa Major by Emma Brody. This is a book I randomly picked up a long time ago. I went into this bookstore that kind of just sold what I think is books that didn't sell in other bookstores. Like, almost like the excess stock from other bookstores, because they had a lot of books that I've never seen before, never heard about. And I saw this book and the cover really intrigued me. And when I read the back of it, I was like, this kind of sounds like it's giving Daisy Jones and the Six vibes. So I picked it up. It was really inexpensive. I think all of the books in this store were like $3 each. They were so cheap. Like I said, I think they were just like excess stock. So I picked up this book along with two others. And I think I've read the other two that I bought, but I still have yet to get to this one. So it's set in the late 60s, early 70s. And on the back, it says it follows a girl called Jane as she kind of steps into the world of rock and roll and becomes a famous rock star. It says that her band hits the road with Jesse Reed, the musician whose bright blue eyes are setting hearts alight everywhere. And as the summer streaks by in a haze of crowds, wild nights, and magenta sunsets, Jane is pulled into the orbit of Jesse's star. So it sounds like there's going to be a romance involved. And while doing all of this, she's also writing an album called Songs in Ursa Major. So it does sound really interesting. I guess this would be classified as historical fiction, and I don't read a ton of historical fiction, so it's a little bit out of my comfort zone but it does sound good. I'm hoping it'll give me similar feelings to Daisy Jones and the Six because that's one of my favorite books ever but I don't know if I'm like setting the expectation too high by saying that so I guess we'll wait and see but this is going to be the first book we start with. I'm 96 pages in so I thought I would give you my initial thoughts because I feel like I've read enough to have an opinion or at least like an initial opinion but so far so good I'm really enjoying it I'm kind of surprised I'm not gonna lie I feel like if you have a book that's been sitting on your TBR cut for a really long time and you haven't picked it up it's probably because you don't think you're going to be obsessed like, I don't know I just I didn't have high hopes for this one I've never heard anyone talk about it obviously that doesn't mean that no one's read it but you know when you just like don't hear people talking about a book it's just not one that you really think about it's not one that you are like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to read it. Like, to be honest, it's just one of those books that I forgot even existed and I forgot I even owned. And so I kind of went into it being like, ah, it'll be nice to get it off the TBR card, you know, but I don't have high hopes, but I'm impressed. It's definitely giving that 70s vibe. The book starts off at a music festival where this guy called Jesse is supposed to be performing, but he doesn't. And so this other really small band takes his place and they perform, they're called The Breakers. And Jane, who is our main character, she is also like the lead guitarist and singer of that band. And so they take Jesse's spot and they perform and the crowd loves them. And so we are just kind of following Jane who is just this very like small town girl with big dreams. She wants to make it in the music industry and this is kind of I guess the start of her music career but we are kind of seeing how it's not as simple as it seems and how sometimes being a woman specifically in the music industry it might not be as easy as she originally thought. So that's really interesting. I also think there's a lot more about Jane's backstory that we're probably going to learn because it feels like there there's a lot more than has been explained so far. I feel like there's a lot more depth to be explored so hopefully we'll get that 
But so far so good. I am really impressed and I'm hoping that the level of interest I have now will continue throughout the rest of the book because if it does, this will be probably like a four star read for me. We are interrupting the reading vlog for a second because I have some new clothes and I want to show you. These are all from Pebble and Puff and as always, I have a discount code for you, which is Rachel20 and that will get you 20% off your order, including sales. So definitely get on that. I'll have the website link down below as well as all of the items that I mentioned. Let me show you what's in here. Actually, have I already opened it up and gone through it? Yes. Am I actually wearing one of the outfits right now? Maybe. How cute is it though? I have this gorgeous little linen top. It's got some pleats. It's got some ties. I feel so cute in this. Another little top that I think is so beautiful. I'm loving all of these like tie front tops at the moment. Look at the beautiful detailing on the fabric of this one. It is gorgeous and just a little bit unique as well. I'm obsessed with this. I also picked up the perfect staple piece for summer. Some white linen pants and I actually decided to size up in these ones because one, I've realized that I really like my linen pants to be kind of baggy and because they still have the drawstring you can tighten the waist as tight as you want it to be so they still fit and also I'm not gonna lie I always shrink my linen pants in the wash so I thought if I get a size up if they shrink a little bit I'm gonna try not to shrink them but if they do shrink a little bit it's not gonna matter I am just looking out for my future self I know I'm a forgetful person and I will put it on a hot wash when I indeed meant to put it on a cold wash so I'm just being honest okay potentially one of my favorite items out of this haul is this beautiful dress look at the print on this it's pink and it has like little flowers all over it. It is just so beautiful. The sleeves with the frill, the tie at the front, the ruching. It's got everything I could dream of. Did I order the same piece in two different colors? Yes, because I know I'm going to live in these. These are gorgeous little skorts. These aren't linen. They're more of like a business pant kind of material, I would say. And I just feel like these can be dressed up or dressed down so easily. This next one is kind of bright. I'm warning you now. It's a little out of my comfort zone, but I do think it's gorgeous. Wabam. Yep, a bright yellow maxi dress. I'm hoping the vibe I'm gonna give when I'm wearing this is like human sunshine and hopefully not like human highlighter. I think it's really beautiful. It's my favorite style, kind of like a baby doll style where it's tight around the bust and then just flows right out. So extremely comfortable and just so beautiful. And the last item I have to show you is so sinking cute. As soon as I saw it on the website, I was like, I need this in my life. You're kidding. And it also ties in a bow at the back. This is so gorgeous. I cannot wait to wear this. As I mentioned, I've got a code which is Rachel20 if you guys want to save some money off your own Pedal and Pop order. And thank you so much Pedal and Pop for sponsoring this little part of the vlog. Back to reading. I have about 50 pages left. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I've just like lost attachment to this book. I just feel like the plot kind of, I don't know, it just lost me. It's very character driven. It's very much like we're following the main character do her thing and like try and make it in the music industry but it just kind of feels like something like big happened and since then it feels like it's gone downhill. I just don't care because it feels like nothing's really going on. So I'm intrigued to see if my opinion changes. I felt like at the start I was really enjoying it. It was so atmospheric. It was so interesting. I was so attached to the main character specifically and like her storyline but now I'm just like What's even happening, you know? just finished songs in Ursa Major. We did lose the light. The sun ended up setting as I was finishing it, so had to turn on the big light, unfortunately. But I wanted to give you my final thoughts. I'm a bit like conflicted because I feel like I really enjoyed the start. I would say the last like 30% or so, I was a bit like eh about, but then I also did like the ending. I feel like it ended well, but not perfectly, but I mean that in a good way. Like I feel like in a lot of romance books that you pick up, everything ends in like perfect little bow. Like everything is wrapped up just so perfectly and they all live happily ever after and they all get what they wanted and all of the problems go away and it's all just perfect. And obviously when you're reading general fiction, historical fiction, literary fiction, stuff like that, you don't always get those perfect endings and that was definitely the case for this book. Like I personally felt very satisfied by the ending, but it wasn't like the ending I think a lot of people maybe expected when you read this book like you really want specific people to do specific things or end up with specific people or end up in specific situations I guess and it didn't like give you that or at least didn't give me exactly what I wanted with that but I was still like okay I, I can deal with this ending this feels like an ending that would happen if this 
story was real and I feel like that made it feel satisfying if that makes sense because I feel like real life stories don't usually end up in a perfect little bow with no issues and no problems and everyone lives happily ever after like usually there is a bit of a you know it didn't end perfectly but people still got where they needed to be you know so that's what I would say about the ending. I loved the atmosphere. I loved the vibe. It felt so 70s in saying that. I obviously wasn't alive in the 70s, so like literally who am I to say anything about that? But like based on the movies I've seen and like the other books I've read in the 70s and things like that, it was very atmospheric. It was very vibey. I love books like this set in the 70s or like around those time periods. I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't help but like compare it to Daisy Jones and the Six like the whole way through because it is about a young girl who gets into the music industry in the 70s and all of the things that follow. Like it's the classic like sex, drugs and rock and roll kind of vibe. Falling in love with people that maybe you shouldn't and then trying to deal with that and also trying to make a name for yourself, trying to create a reputation and an image for yourself as a woman in music and in rock and roll specifically so it it very much like I don't want to say mirrored Daisy Jones and the Six because it was still a very different story different things happened it it didn't like copy that at all but it was just like I don't know it felt very reminiscent of that I don't know if this author read Daisy Jones and the Six loved it so much and then wanted to create a story that felt similar to that or if she's never even read Daisy Jones and the Six and it was just a coincidence that it ended up being so similar or so like parallel to that but it did just feel feel like someone tried to write Daisy Jones and the Six and didn't do as good of a job. And I don't even mean that in a bad way because I still really enjoyed this, but Daisy Jones and the Six, like that is just on another level. And I don't, I can't imagine another book that is set in the seventies about rock and roll or about a band with a girl as the main character. Like I can't imagine a book with those things being as good as Daisy Jones. Like I just, it's not going to happen. So I did try and make it happen with this. I did try and read this, hoping it would kind of give me that. And it it did give me it to an extent but just just not on the same level as Daisy and I definitely think that's partly on me like I don't think you should go into a book expecting it to give you what another book gave you especially when it's written by a completely different person like my expectations going into this were probably not the best I should have gone in a little bit more open-minded maybe just being like oh I hope it kind of gives Daisy Jones vibes but I was really hoping it would give me the exact same feelings as Daisy Jones did and it didn't it did to an extent, but it didn't completely. So whose fault is that? Mine. However, if you do want something in the same realm as Daisy Jones, if you want to have the same kind of vibe and the atmosphere and read about a girl in the 70s trying to make it big in the rock and roll world, definitely read this. Like, it was, it was really entertaining. It was really good. But yeah, just like not not on that level. I'm gonna be quiet about this now because I feel like I'm just repeating myself. I enjoyed this. I think at one point I thought it was gonna be a four star read. I think it did drop down to maybe like a three and a half. It was good. I enjoyed it. New day, new book. This is the one that I've decided to pick up. This is The Anatomy of Songs by Megan White. I picked this up in Big W, ooh, I want to say last year. And the reason why I picked it up is because it's by an Australian author and I had actually seen the author posting on TikTok and it got me intrigued and she sold me, so great marketing from her, I guess. As far as I know, it's adult fantasy, and it looks like we're following two main characters. We're following Kasira, who is daughter of Silva, as a daughter of Silva, curing the low town of their ailments. So like a healer, I wanna say. But when the sun sets, she becomes the city's most notorious assassin, which sounds really interesting. And then the other character we're following is Viridian, Crown Prince of Leveda, with darking, twisting conspiracies, treacherous ancestors, and a hair-raising night watcher stalking the streets, the two fated enemies have far more to be wary of than each other. I have a feeling it might be like enemies to lovers. I guess we'll wait and see. I don't know if this is a series. I don't know if it's a standalone. It's one of those books where it's like, I saw it in Big W, I bought it, and then I'm not gonna lie, I haven't thought about it since. Hence why it has been sitting on my TBR cart for so long. It's just like, never the book that I really am in the mood to pick up but I want to give it a chance I want to see how it goes because it sounds good it just sounds like a classic adult romanticy enemies to lovers political intrigue female main character that's also an assassin we have seen it a few times before but that doesn't mean it won't be good I guess we'll see what I think of this one I just got up to chapter 23, which is page 157. So I thought I'd give you like my initial thoughts. Honestly, it's, it's good. 
like I don't necessarily have many I was about to say any many complaints it's dual POV and it is very much that kind of like classic enemies to lovers our female main character is a healer by day assassin by night her dad is just like not a very nice guy and then we have Viridian who is the prince and yeah that's that's kind of it I feel like the story has been set up well the world has been built well I think I'm understanding everything I need to understand and I feel like the best way to describe it is that it is just a very classic adult fantasy book there's political intrigue there's world building. I honestly think my only criticism that I have so far, which I will say is quite a significant criticism, is just that I do not care about these characters and that's my least favourite criticism to give because usually if I'm saying that, I don't really know why that's the case. Like, I can't tell you why I don't care about these characters but if you don't care about characters, you usually don't care about their storylines. You don't care if something bad happens to them. So if bad things are happening in the book, it's not like it's, oh my gosh, are they gonna be okay? Like, I don't care at this point. It just doesn't feel like it's giving me anything new, which is just a little bit frustrating to me. And it's hard because there are a lot of fantasy books out there and obviously they're all a little bit different, but there's also a lot that have very similar themes. And this is just kind of giving me everything I've already seen, but maybe just like not as good as I've seen it in other books. Like obviously she is a female assassin, which I've seen before. She's also a healer, which I've seen before. The male main character is a prince, which I have seen many, 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 many times before. And so right now I'm just kind of like, okay, <laughs> give me something new, please. Like give me something I haven't seen before. But maybe if you haven't read a lot of books that have similar themes to them, maybe you'd really enjoy it. I really hate saying I don't connect with characters because it's such like a, a personal preference type of situation. It's a case by case scenario. Characters that I wouldn't connect with, you might connect with and vice versa. So it's it's not very good feedback to give you guys because it's a lot harder for you to know whether you'd like a book. Like if I can say, oh, it's really good writing and it's this type of humor and I think if you liked this book, you might like this book. Like those are good pieces of feedback to give you guys because you can probably judge whether you would like the book based on my recommendation or my feedback to you. But me just saying, oh, I don't really connect with the characters, it's not very helpful. So I'm sorry that that is my feedback so far, but I just have nothing else to give you. I don't really have any like legitimate complaints apart from the fact that it's just not clicking with me and I just don't care about it and unfortunately I just like don't really care about picking it up or not. Like I've read a decent amount but it's just like not one of those books that I'm thinking about when I'm not reading it. And every time I'm like oh I should sit down and read I'm kind of like oh I kind of wish I was reading something else. So hopefully my opinion changes and one of the good things about this criticism that I'm giving this book right now is that my opinion could change. Like this book can definitely prove itself to me if it changes my mind. So I'm not saying it's just going to be bad and I'm not going to like it, but at this point in the book it's very meh. Excuse my hair, it's like half wet, half dry. I'm just letting it air dry. But I've been meaning to give you guys an update for so long, but every time I go to like film an update I'm just like I have nothing to say. I just still feel the exact same about this book as I did last time I talked to you guys about it. I just feel so bad because it's not a bad book at all. I think it's written well. I think it's developed well. I think the plot is interesting. But because I don't care about these characters, I just, I'm kind of bored. I'm just like reading it to finish it at this point. I debated DNFing it for a little bit because I was like, I'm not really having the best time, but the book isn't bad and I think I'd rather just finish it. It's not bad at all. I just feel so terrible for this book because I just, I know it's not the book's fault. It's just, I don't care about it at all. So yeah, at the moment my mindset is I'm just excited to finish it. I have a little over a hundred pages left. I'll probably just update you guys when I'm done with it and hopefully that'll be kind of soon. It is now the next day and I finished The Anatomy of Songs and I don't think I have anything else to say about this book that I haven't already said. My feelings did not change. I wish they did, but they just didn't. I think I'm gonna give it three stars because I truly, truly do not think this is a bad book at all. I just think I didn't click with it. I didn't connect with it. I just didn't grow to love the characters. So therefore I just didn't care 
what was happening in the story, which is such a shame. I do think a lot of my opinion is due to like the timing of when I read this. I think if I'd read this at another point in time, maybe I'd feel differently about it. But obviously I can only tell you about the experience that I had. So I would still recommend this book. I think a lot of people out there would really, really love it because I think it was well written. I thought the story was interesting, but it just wasn't a fave for me. So I don't think I can give it a better rating than that. Like part of me wants to, but that just wouldn't be truthful of like my reading experience. But I would not be surprised Surprised if other people read this and gave it four stars or a higher rating because I think it could be a really great read for some people but it just wasn't it for me but I'm not gonna lie quite happy this is over and I'm excited to start a new book because I was just I was just so done with this one I think I want to start a romance because we read a historical fiction and we read a fantasy, so I think I want to read a romance next. I've made up my mind about which book I'm going to read next, and I think I'm going to choose Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Lease. This is the second book in the Wilmont Sisters series. I'll show you the first book. This is the first book. I think the covers are quite pretty. The first one was called Two Wrongs Make a Right and the second one is called Better Hate Than Never. I have a feeling these are all... Yes, okay. So this is a reimagining of Much Ado About Nothing and then this one is a reimagining of The Taming of the Shrew, I think. Yeah. Taming of the Shrew. Um, and I also just read like the first couple pages like the author's note and stuff like that and it says that this book has ADHD and chronic condition representation which I'm really intrigued about. I personally love seeing neurodivergent representation especially recently because it's a discussion that I've been having a lot with my therapist so sometimes it's just nice to read about characters that just have a similar brain to yours. So I'm really intrigued to see how this goes. I don't have any experience with chronic conditions. This one says it's about chronic migraines, but I guess we'll start it and we'll see what we think. But first, it's Sunny Angel time, I think, because I got some new Sunny Angels and I've been trying to open them slowly, but I think I want to open a new one today. So I'm so excited. This is the new Sunny Angel I'm going to open. I got a new Harvest Hipper, which I'm so excited about. I have the apple and it's sitting in my car and I love it so much. So I'm really excited to have a new one. Liam has recently decided he thinks it's really fun to watch Sunny Angel unboxings too. Which one do you want me to get? You pick your favorite. Um, I reckon the um, mushroom or carrot. Mushroom or carrot? Yeah. I think my top favorites would be, I also really love the mushroom. Mm -hmm. I like mushroom. pretty much all of them. I don't want an apple because I already have it, but I think everything else I'd be happy with, I'd prefer maybe not a pineapple, but everything else I would like. You mean a cherry? I'd love a cherry. I think they're cute. What? Well, don't you like about the pineapple? The, I don't know. The pineapple just doesn't sit right with me. Or the surprise. I'd like the surprise. It doesn't have much of a shape to it, so that kind of scares me because that could mean it's a pineapple, but it also could mean it's a cherry, carrot. Oh, that's probably the only other tall ones. Oh, and radish, sorry. And I like the radish and the carrot and the cherry, so. I'm scared. <laughs> Ready? <gasps> it's a carrot! I love it. That's cute. Do you like it? Yeah. Say hello to Mr. Carrot. So, so cute. I don't know whether I want to put this one in my car with my with my papple, <laughs> with my apple. I could put him on my laptop. I mean, there are probably so many places, but I feel like the car is very cute. I love it. I have a reading update for you guys. And yes, I did get it on my Kindle. I was just really in a Kindle mood, so. Did I buy the Kindle version? Yes. Did I need to? No. We can move on. We don't have to talk about it. Anyway, I am about halfway through this book and I have flown through it. I'm honestly hoping I might be able to finish the rest of it today because, I don't know, I just feel like the rest of it's going to fly by as well and I just want to know what's going to happen. At the start of this book, for the first maybe like 30 to 40% of it, I was like, yeah, this is good, but I don't feel that connected to it. Like. I can tell that it's a good rom-com and there were parts of it that I was like oh that's really cute or really funny like the banter between our two main characters I think is quite good and so there were certain scenes where I was like oh like that is a funny scene or that is a cute scene but overall I was just like yeah like it's fun and it's good but it's nothing revolutionary you know it just kind of feels like another rom-com and I just didn't feel personally attached to it and I'm not gonna lie I was starting to feel a little bit discouraged because I was like what is with these books recently like this is the third book that I've read in this video and is this just gonna be another three star read like am I the problem am I like not in the right mood am I heading towards a reading slump like why am I not like really enjoying anything and I've been I've enjoyed the books that I've picked up like none of them have been like so awful and 
terrible, but none of them have just been like, oh my gosh, I'm having a lot of fun. And I was just like, oh, is there something wrong with me? Why can't I seem to just like really enjoy something? And I ended up reading another book that I didn't include in this video, but like in between reading all of these books for this video, I read something else and I really enjoyed that book. And I'm like, oh, I wish I was filming or I wish like that book was included in this video, but that is not a book I've been avoiding. It's more of a recent addition to my physical TBR. So I couldn't include it in this video, but I was reading that separately and I really enjoyed that. I loved it. I had so much fun. And I'm not gonna lie, that just gave me a little bit of reassurance that, okay, maybe it's not me. Maybe I'm not in like an awful mood or heading into a reading slump. It is maybe just the books I'm reading. They're just not clicking with me and that's okay. So I kind of had that moment. I was like, it's okay if I don't have like a four or five star come out of this video, but I don't know. It's just, you want to enjoy the books you pick up. Like you want to give them a high rating. You want to just like be giggling and having a lot of fun when you read a book. And I just wasn't having that. But last night I was reading this book in bed and I got to that like 50% point. And I had this moment where I was like, wait a second, am I giggling at this book? Am I smiling at my Kindle? I think I am. And I just had this moment where I was like, wait a second, I think I'm connected to this book. I think I'm attached to these characters. And that was just the best feeling. I just needed to give it some time. And obviously there are just gonna be books that you don't love and you're not obsessed with and that's so fine. But it is just the best feeling ever when you're like, wait, I'm having a lot of fun with this. So I kind of like finally hit that moment in this book where I'm like, wait, this is good. I'm having so much fun. So I'm very happy to report that this is looking good. This is looking good. Hopefully I continue to giggle and kick my feet as this book progresses, but obviously we'll have to wait and see. I just realized I haven't even given you like a summary or a synopsis. So basically this book follows Christopher and Kate. And I will say this is the second book in the Belmont Sisters I think trilogy. I think it's gonna be a trilogy because there are three sisters. I think the next one kind of, I've like seen the front cover of the next one. I don't know if it's out or if it's coming out soon. I'm not sure what the situation is, but I would recommend reading the first book in this series before going into this one. I think I read that one maybe last year. It's called Two Wrongs Make a Right and it was good. It wasn't like a top favorite for me, but I had fun reading it. And although these books are technically interconnected standalones and they each follow a different couple, the couple from the first book is heavily involved in the second book. So if you don't read the first book, you're probably gonna miss a lot of like the little details that come up again in this second book and you just won't get the full experience. So I would recommend reading the first book, but you technically don't have to. But anyway, in the first book we follow, I don't know if it's B or Bia. I think it's just B and Jamie, I think his name is. And in this book, we're following B's little sister, Kate, who has ADHD and she just like has never really felt like she belonged with her family. Like her family is super Super loving, super great, super supportive, but she's kind of always felt like the black sheep. She never really felt like she was like fully a part of this family. And because she's never fully felt like she belonged, she's kind of spent her whole life almost like running away. Like she moved out really quickly and has just like lived all over the world. She's a photographer. So she kind of just goes wherever her job allows her to go and like lives in all these different places. But she's decided to come home for a few reasons, which also ties to the first book. So again, I would kind of recommend reading that. And it's kind of like her first time being at home for like a long period of time since being an adult and not just being able to like run away when something gets hard or she just like feels a bit uncomfortable so she's kind of navigating this new time in her life and then we're also following Christopher who suffers with chronic migraines and he works for this really interesting like I think it's called ethical investing or something. It's like a hedge fund kind of situation. I don't really know, I don't really care. He's a finance guy, that's all I know. And he's very high up in this company. But he is also like pretty much part of the Wilmont family. So his parents passed away when he was, I think a teenager and he lived next door to the Wilmont family and they kind of just like took him in and he was technically raised past that point by his grandmother, but he was also like kind of raised by the Wilmont family. And so he sees the Wilmont sisters as his sisters and Mr. and Mrs. Wilmont as his parents. And he like spends every holiday with them and all of that sort of stuff. So like that is his family. But because Kate has never really been at home since she was in school, school, he's never really had that kind of sister relationship with her. And they've always had this like rivalry and this like resentment towards each other. And it gets explained as to why they have this resentment for each other, but they just don't get along. And so this is their first time trying to like navigate having to get along. And obviously there are feelings that eventually 
kind of come up. I will say at the start, I was a bit hesitant because I was like, okay, you're telling me that Christopher feels like this is his family and that the Wilmot sisters are like his sisters and the love interest is one of those sisters. Like, that's weird. That's weird. Also, I think he's like six years older. And so it talks about how he was like 18 when she was 12. That's weird. And it gets brought up a few times. And so I was like, Ugh, I really, like, I don't know how I feel about that. And at the start, that was really like weighing on me. I was like, I don't think I'm going to like this book because they keep bringing up the age gap and how like he sees them as sisters but you know that she's the love interest and like I just I didn't like that but the more you read it the more you're kind of like wait okay first of all when he was 18 and she was 12 there was definitely no romantic things going on like the romance does not begin until like this book and it's not like there were feelings brewing when he was 18 and she was 12 or anything like that because at the start I was like eh, I am scared I am scared but I feel like it's done well, I do wish they mentioned the age gap a little bit less because again, it still like weighs on my mind. In this book, I think he is like 34, 33, 33, and she's 27 or something like that. So it's very <laughs> appropriate. The age gap now, very appropriate. But yeah, for a bit, I was like, yeah. But now I'm like, okay, it's fine. It's it's okay. But yeah, I've gotten to the point where he definitely has realized that he has feelings for her. And I don't know if she's kind of like come to the conclusion of like, she knows she has feelings for him. She definitely has attraction to him, but I don't know if she like really realizes if she like, likes him do you know what i mean or if it's just like an attraction situation so i'm gonna keep reading and i guess we'll see what happens but hopefully i continue to really enjoy it kate told christopher about one of her insecurities and like one of the reasons why she feels like she doesn't belong and he just did something that showed he listened to her and now he's like doing something practical about it and i <laughs> it's such a small gesture but like he cares he cares about her i love it i love it it's so cute I just finished this book and it was so cute. So cute. I had such a fun time. Also, we got to the conflict. You know how like at the end of a romance book or towards the end of a romance book, there's typically like a third act breakup or some sort of conflict. You could kind of like see where it was going. And I was like, surely not. Like, ugh, like, ugh. You know, just like we've all seen this before. And then it took a turn and it was not what I thought. It was so much better. And it was just like such a good conflict, I guess. I don't want to like say anything else about it because I don't want to ruin it, but it was good. I do feel like it wrapped up a tiny bit too quickly for my liking. There were just like a couple things. I was like, oh, I wish we'd seen a little bit more of this or a little bit more of this. Cause we kind of got to this part. And then the next page that I turned, it was like six months later. And I was like, oh, we're already at the epilogue. It didn't technically say epilogue, but it did say six months later. I feel like that means an epilogue I don't know but I just wish we'd had like even like 20 more pages towards the end just to like really enjoy that last bit of the book rather than just being like and now everything's good the end do you know what I mean but still a fun time I think I'm gonna give it four stars which great rating the birds outside are being so loud but I'm just so glad that that ended up being a good one because honestly when it started I was like Meh. like it's good but it's not going to be a favorite and then by the end I was like wait these characters are so fun the guy was obsessed with her and I loved that and he just really showed how obsessed he was and I, I love that so much there is like a decent amount of spice I would say in all of Chloe Lee's books I would say actually in comparison to the other books I've read by Chloe Lee because I think this one is my fourth one by this author this was probably the least amount of spice I I want to say I could be wrong but it felt a lot more emotional so if you don't like spice I wouldn't recommend Chloe Lease unless you're happy to skip over those types of scenes that's what I do but apart from the spice I just think that her characters are written really well there's a lot of diversity within her books which I really appreciate and they're just fun good banter just like good stories so I think I want to read the third one let's see when the third one comes out or if it's already out it's called 
once bitten twice shy okay let's see what goodreads has to say so the third one is a reimagining of shakespeare's twelfth night which i have no knowledge of like i don't know anything about twelfth night i don't think i've ever read that the only shakespeare i've read is in high school so if i didn't read it in high school i have no knowledge of it i don't know who this love interest is i don't think we've met him in the other parts of the series with neither of them looking for love jules and will agree they're the perfect pair to practice romance that's so fun when does it come out though oh 14th of january next year oh oh well i can wait for that but the cover is beautiful it's pink which is so cute because the first one in this series is red the second one is orange and this one will be like pink which I think they'll look so good together on the shelf. I love it when authors or whoever chooses the covers take that into consideration. Like, yeah, make my series look good on the shelf. Thank you. Anyway, well, I'm just like in the best mood after finishing that. I'm just like, oh, that was so cute. We have made it to the end of the video and I thought we could quickly go over the books that I read in this little reading vlog. I always end up having so much more fun filming these than I think I will. Even the books that I'm not like obsessed with, there is something so satisfying about reading a book that has been on your TBR for a really long time or a book that has felt intimidating for a really long time. Like I feel so accomplished just knocking down my TBR one book at a time. But anyway, let's talk about the books that I read in this video. We started off with Songs in Ursa Major. This was a historical fiction, very reminiscent of Daisy Jones and the Six. It's about a girl who is part of a band in the 70s and just her journey getting famous and writing music and the ups and downs that she goes through, the relationship she goes through. And I enjoyed this. It wasn't like a total favorite of mine, but I did find the story really interesting and I ended up giving this one 3.5 and I would recommend especially if you want something that will give you a similar vibe to Daisy Jones I wouldn't go in expecting the exact same thing or like something as good as Daisy Jones but if you just want another book with a similar vibe I definitely recommend then we picked up The Anatomy of Songs by Megan White I thought this was a good book but unfortunately it's just too similar to so many other books that I've read previously so it felt very predictable and just like nothing new it didn't give me anything new and exciting Exciting. And so I just don't think this was like the best time for me to read this I think if I had read this when I first started reading fantasy and I hadn't already read a lot of books like this I may have really enjoyed it or maybe if I was just really in the mood for this specific type of enemies to lovers assassin healer prince book It could have definitely been a book that I enjoyed a lot more So I do think timing has a lot to do with how you feel about a book and I don't think it's this book's fault But it just wasn't a favorite for me I just didn't connect to the characters and at the end of the day if you don't connect to the characters it's hard to really enjoy it so so sorry to this book but I can see a lot of people really enjoying this so I still recommend this I gave it three stars it's not a bad book it just didn't stand out to me and lastly we read Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Lee so this was definitely my favorite out of the three books that I read in this video this just had me giggling and kicking my feet it did take me a second to really feel attached and get invested into the story and the characters but once I was invested I had such a good time and I definitely recommend this but I would recommend and starting with the first book in this little interconnected standalone trilogy and I gave this one four stars so all in all a decent week of reading 3.5 stars three stars four stars like that's that's pretty good it's not awful it's not amazing but it's good and the main thing is I read three books that have been sitting on my physical TBR for probably over a year at this point so that feels really good. But I hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. Let me know if you have any ideas that you would like to see in specific reading vlogs, like any themes or challenges you would like to see. I've been starting to plan out some of my videos for the rest of the year and I would love to know what you guys would like to see. So if you have any ideas, please let me know. But otherwise, I guess I'll see you guys in my next video very soon. Goodbye.